I can't believe how pricey these spicy peppers were. Get ready for some hot facts next on Real World. Why are some foods more expensive than others? And why do some places have more of one type of food than others? It all boils down to food supply and what plants need in order to grow. So there are many things that plant needs in order to grow. They need water, they need air, they need nutrients that they largely get from the soil, they need sunlight or sunshine, they need heat to grow, they need time of course so they don't grow in one day, they grow through time. And what they do is they use through their roots, they will carry up the nutrients into the various parts of the, the crop that will let, let them grow, develop, and eventually create the fruit, which is then what we uh, harvest. All of these are what we call natural resources. Our earth provides us with a lot of natural resources, and all of these are really important for life on earth, whether that's human life or um, the ecosystem and, and crops or animals. So NASA has a really important um, Earth observing fleet of satellites that are continuously going around the world and providing different types of information. Satellite data are a great tool for us to monitor this kind of information and monitor that on a daily basis to give us a global picture, but that can give us information all the way down at the field scale around how crops are developing, what we can expect the, the productivity is. And the important part is then to convert that data into information that decision makers can use. So crop yields are the harvested production per unit of a harvested area of a, of a crop. You know, thinking about why is it important for us to measure or to understand yield, um, that's essentially giving us the, the measure of productivity of a crop. And when we multiply the yield by the area of where it's produced, that'll give us the total production, which is generally uh, oftentimes measured in, in tons themselves. And that's giving us essentially, if we think about what our food supply is, we need to care not only what's happening in one country, but our, our, our food system is really interconnected. And so it's really important for us to understand actually globally what's going on. So if there's a drought, for example, in Russia, it's one of the biggest exporters of wheat to Egypt. And, um, and therefore for, for bread. So if Russia has a shortfall, right? If, if Russia has produces less than it normally would or less than expected, that has big implications for all the people that are importing food from Russia. It actually has implications globally because when we have less food than what we expect or less grain than what we expect, that can have implications also for across the world in terms of increasing prices. On vice versa, when you have a lot of supply, then the, the prices will go down because you can meet all that demand and more than, than what you have. So that's the data that NASA collects about food. But how do we use that data and what does it look like? There are a lot of data sets that come together to help us forecast potential food shortages. The most commonly used band index is NDVI, which is Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And it tells us something about how healthy the crops are and how green they are, how much um, chlorophyll is in their leaves. So high NDVI means really healthy crops, low NDVI means very little vegetation. Outliers are data points that are substantially different than the rest of the data set. And maybe this is a sensor error, or maybe a cloud got in the way and resulted in a much different value than the rest of the points. But we also look at other variables like the weather data, which might include rainfall or temperature data. We look at soil moisture, since healthy and moist soils are important for crop growth. The model might take in all of this evidence and predict that food production will be low in that region. And then we can then pass that information along to decision makers who can help to prevent or mitigate the effects of the potential food shortage. Even though we can observe variables like NDVI, weather, and soil moisture from space, we need to use ground truth data to know how what we're seeing from space and the satellite images matches up with what's actually happening on the ground. Many people use this information. Farmers are always looking to maximize their production. Governments care about how much food is produced, where the food is being produced, and the economic impacts of food production. Much of this data is open source and available to the public through NASA resources online. Sounds like a lot of math, 
but it all adds up to understanding how the world's food supply works and how NASA's eyes in the sky can help put food on your plate. Sounds like it's time for me to put some food on my plate. See you next time on Real World.